and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. Today we're gonna weather steam locomotive. Uh, this is a non-prototypic weathering, uh, but it's a good process for a reversible type weathering you can do on even your more exp expensive uh, engines or locomotives. I don't know how things are on the other continents, but here in Europe uh, many of the locomotives and the engines available are kind of uh, uh, pricey. They start at like uh, 300, 350 euros or US dollars uh, and uh, continue up to five, 550 like that. And then it could be a bit of a, a problem to, to, to start painting them uh, first thing you do. But if you're using water-based colors like we will do in this tutorial, uh, it's easy to remove in case you want to sell uh, the, 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 the locomotive on, on eBay or something like that. So, uh, we're going over to my friend who introduced me into this process and uh, he will show us uh, how to do it. Let's go. Let's start by pouring up a glass of cold, fresh water. Drop a few drops of soap into that, so you get away with rid of the water tension. Wetten your grey color. If you do not have a grey color, it's absolutely possible to mix a grey color from black and white. Start by covering most or all of the surfaces, visible surfaces, with this grey uh, color. When dry, it looks something like this. All grey everywhere. Then it's time for some black. The black is painted on top of the grey, so it will partly dissolve and the, the underlying grey paint. The further down you get on your uh, locomotive or engine, the more black you add. Then it's time to wipe some of that color off because we do not want the entire loco to be gray like this. The gray should be only the representation of dirt where it stays. The windows and the lamps, the headlights of the locomotive is cleaned with a cotton pin. I also use the cotton pin to wipe some of that excessive grey paint away from narrow places. Once we have got rid of some of that grey paint, I dip the cotton pin into water and wipe a bit more of that paint off, just so the dirt or the grey, blackish grey paint just stays where I cannot reach with my cotton pin. Next thing is to add some details. I start with white, which represents chalk, which is uh, leftovers from water. This is useful typically in the, on the tender where they have filled water in the tanks. Also uh, around any taps or things on, on the boiler. Check with prototype pictures and you will get an idea of where to put the white. Next thing is the brown details. The brown is typically put on pipes. So I paint the pipes and I also paint the walking board and some on the buffers and the couplings. And then I wipe some of that extra paint away with a cotton pin. And I need to add a bit more here to get that rusty look. Lastly, I clean the headlights once again and signs and other things that shouldn't be too dirty. And of course the wheel, so the loco or the engine picks up 
current in a proper way. And this is the final result, after only like 10 or 15 minutes without watercolors. Well, not so bad looking and completely uh, removable and not so very tricky to do. So give it a try. Uh, hope you liked the tutorial. Uh, if you did, please help me by giving it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of the tutorials, please subscribe to the channels and you will get a notification once next video goes live. Until that happens, ciao! Merklin of Sweden is also available on the following media platforms. MRRTutorials.com Complete video listing sorted on the topic. Facebook. Here you find the latest and greatest with Merklin of Sweden. All new videos are also published here. Instagram. Snapshot from the miniature world. Pinterest. Links to cool miniature stuff. And Google+. Here you will also find the latest and greatest as well as new video releases.